Okay, now we're going to actually discuss the lighting uh, of the side panels. Uh, we're going to do it now rather than at the end. The reason is because before we get the rest of the frame put together in the z-axis and the x-axis in here, uh, it's easier to see what we're doing. And so, anyway, what you need is the power supply already hooked up, if you recall. We've already got the switch on there. Uh, go ahead and turn it off uh, before you plug it in. And, uh, you're gonna, we're most interested in the little pigtail uh, that comes off of there, and that's actually for our lighting. And then uh, what you'll need is the lighting pack. So all it is, it's got a couple RGB strips in there, a couple vibration isolation strips, and a controller. So let's go ahead and pull that all out of there. So we just kind of put it out on the table. Two vibration isolation strips, two RGB strips, a Y splitter, so that uh, takes one power and uh, splits it for two different strips. And then we have the controller that's in a crumpled box usually, but uh, by the time you get it, it'll probably be crumpled. So uh, anyway, let's go ahead and take the controller out of the box. And in it, you'll see there's a little remote control. Uh, some of them are a little bit more fancy than others. And a controller. So. Then on top of that, if you look in the bottom of the box, uh, there's some uh, small little wires that I've also included that, that didn't come with the controller or anything. Uh, those are for experimenting, and uh, if you want to see some of the lighting effects that I got, uh, you'll need some of these, and I'll show you in a minute how to use those. First, we're going to take this controller out of the little protective package here, and while it's not under power, we're going to plug the power plug into that hole there. So uh, take the power plug and plug it into that hole. And if you look, this has a little black dot on there, and that's actually the IR uh, infrared uh, you know, control um, signal from your remote control. Uh, it goes there, and uh, you can see that. The other plug that's on there, that is actually the power plug for the strips. And if you look, every plug, uh, it's very hard to see, especially on the white one, has an arrow on one end or the other. That arrow uh, means black, or it means the common for each of these strips. So what we're going to do is we could hook one individual strip in. You see it's got black on one side um, there, and we could hook that in there. Uh, but what we're going to actually do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to hook the splitter in there. So what you want to do is make sure that the two arrows line up. And once they're lined up, you just kind of wiggle them together and there you go. Now if you look, each of these plugs uh, on both sides um, are actually female plugs. And so to make up for that, uh, what we do is we put in a little jumper strip like this in one side and you just kind of push it in there and if you look I've already done it for this one and so you just kind of push it and wiggle it in there you don't ever want to take your needle nose pliers and wiggle it on there and the reason is because if you happen to have this under power uh, that is the fastest way to uh, kill your controller for your RGB controller is to short out two pins so Anyway, what we're going to do is we're just going to plug in one side into that, and we look, we want the arrow to line up to the black side, so whatever side has the black, and we wiggle it on there, the black wire lines up to the arrow. Sometimes they'll have uh, blue, red, green, and then white. Uh, it's whatever is not the, the red, uh, green, or blue, and uh, we got that one lined up. So let's go ahead and look at the other side. And on the other side, I have to kind of flip it over, and we will line those up. So, and you kind of wiggle it together as best you can. And so let's, uh, right now, what we're going to do is we're going to power on the, um, the power supply and see if these uh, two strips actually light up. So, oh, wow, there we go. Yes, definitely they are lit up. So we're going to turn the power supply off, and hopefully that dies pretty soon. Okay, so that's good to go. So what we're going to do is that we want this urethane membrane to go on the bottom side and to touch the bottom edge of the vision panels. But before we do that, if you look on the back side, um, you have a 3M tape. I usually just leave that on there um, just because I don't usually move my machines too much. I also have a vibration isolation thing. It has tape on the bottom too. The good news is that on the bottom side of the tape is a very smooth surface and so as it's on the table, um, it kind of 
uh, allows it to move if it needed to, and it actually adds a little bit more vibration isolation, makes your machine a little bit quieter if you leave it there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to actually uh, put these on top of each other. If you wanted to, you could peel one tape or the other off and stick them back to back, uh, or stick the tape side onto here. Make sure it's all lined up straight before you put it underneath the machine, and uh, there you go. And if you wanted to, you could actually uh, use a little bit of your capped on tape to tape the edges of these onto the machine. And that way, when you pick up the machine, the whole thing stays together. Uh, but uh, anyway, what we're going to do is we're just going to put this as is underneath the side panel. So we're going to kind of line these up. And I'm doing this backwards. I'm actually showing you from the front side. Normally, you would have all the power supply and all that on the back side of it. But uh, just to demonstrate this. We're just going to leave this all on the front side. So let me go ahead and uh, uh, kind of wiggle these on here. And since they've already been curled up because they've been in the pack for a while, what we're going to do is just line it up and put it underneath there. And what you want is it to line up just dead smack right up underneath the half inch uh, acrylic or 12 millimeter acrylic on both sides and so you end up you know doing a series of tapping these things back and forth uh, to get it to line up and if you're good at it I'm still not that great at it then you get it to line up just perfectly and you want to make sure that that uh, plug on the end if you have to tug it a little bit um, that way it all sits flush on there. Let's do the other side. Spread it out. Uh-oh. You can always replug it back in here in a minute. And so, line that up. Okay, so there we go, we got both sides done, and uh, what you'll probably want to do is uh, wire tie these to the frame um, so that it actually stays on there and it doesn't jostle off there. Let's go back through and uh, make sure that the arrow lines up to the black, and if you needed to, you could actually cap on tape those together. We're going to get rid of these extra little leads out of here because we don't need those right now. Let's turn this back on and see if our panel lines up. I didn't quite get the vibration isolation thing squared up underneath there, but for test purposes and just to demonstrate this, uh, that's what we're going to do. And by not taping them down when I'm moving it, it's kind of a little awkward. So it would be a, be a better idea to tape it down. But uh, anyway, let's line up this thing a little bit better. Okay. So let's just turn this on and see if we get their uh, strange lights again. Oh, there we go. Wow. Okay, so let's use the remote control uh, and uh, turn it to a solid color. So right now, both sides are a solid red. Uh, you could change it to green. You could change it to blue. Uh, you know, you can change it to uh, flash, you know, like it was on, uh, or strobe. And you can control the intensity of them. You could change it to fade, where it actually changes uh, the different lights to different... Uh, you know, uh, at different times, uh, or you can have it uh, with a different thing. Anyway, it has a couple different things on this control, and uh, uh, anyway, if you want, for solid colors, it's not a big deal. If you want to find out how I did it for I had different colors, let's turn the power supply off, and so wait till the um, uh, voltage goes low enough that it actually knocks out the LED strips, and then what I did was I took one side of these, and I switched the red and the blue. So we're going to go ahead uh, and make sure that power supply, unplug all the plugs that you have to, and uh, we're going to pull out the, the little jumper that's there and get that out of here. And in place of that jumper, we're going to take for the black an arrow one. We're going to actually hook the arrow with black into one. We're going to hook that black into the black for here. 
We're going to take the uh, green and hook green into green. I think that's the second one. It's hard to say sometimes on these uh, that the green might actually be the middle one. Uh, it all depends on how they choose to wire it up. And so we're going to hook that one into the second one, I think. And then what we're going to do with the red and the blue, we're going to actually switch them. So whatever, say the last one will be red, which is actually uh, blue. And then we're going to actually switch that to the red position on here. So we're actually just kind of crisscrossing it. And we're going to do that with the blue. So what we've done is we've then uh, rewired our path here so that uh, now when this side thinks it's red, this side will actually go blue. So uh, let's turn it back on and see what we get. So green is going to be the same. Then when we switch to blue, it's red and blue. When we switch to red, it's uh, blue and red. So uh, anyway, so that way you could have it go back and forth. Uh, weird thing is when you change it for different panels and stuff um, for different colors, uh, it actually changes the colors on the both. So once it hits towards the green, uh, they line up, but on the, any of the other colors, they're slightly different. So um, anyway, so let's uh, see. So there's red and blue, and here's some of the other different colors. Like there's uh, orange and blue, uh, green and sort of weird colors. Anyway, that's just uh, the way that I used it to be able to switch into two different colors. So you can play around, get all sorts of different colors uh, if you want to, or you can keep them both the same. Uh, but uh, that's how I got the first panels to look like that.